if is Thank there someone you. here to testify from that group? Yeah, come on forward and, you, and share your perspective with us. Always lots of action here. Um, my name is Heather Bennett, and I'm the president of the Salt Lake City School District Board of Education, a former community council chair. And in my position on the Board of Education, I attend a great majority of the community councils in my school board district. So without repeating anything that, that others have said, I just want you to know that, uh, Representative, that we look at, and I'm speaking to your good intentions here, we do look very hard at both compliance and best practices in everything we do. And in my role on the school board. So I just want to clarify that, that I don't, that as a board member, you know, and then again, I quote right. his state law, it says notwithstanding. Michael, Michael, everyone's seen the law, and I agree with that. Right, I speak can, all is, of the time. Can I please, can you extend the courtesy to me, letting me finish the sentence? Yes. But I mean, are you that? You know, it's right. funny how you say you're threatened by me and you have to have a police officer here, but you can't even let me finish the sentence. Finish the sentence, please, Mr. President. Thank you. So the law says, notwithstanding a local board status as a body corporate, an elected member of a school board serves and represents the residents of the local school board members district. And that service and representation may not be restricted or impaired by the local school board members membership on or obligation to the local school board. Local school resource officers are at the center of a federal investigation. The U.S. Department of Education is looking into the Salt Lake City School District after allegations that minority students are being treated unfairly. Good for Utah's Nadia Crow explains. At both high schools in the Salt Lake City School District, you will find school resource officers or police officers who work in the schools. And we have five junior highs in the city, but only two of them have an officer there full time. One of them is Glendale Middle School, home to a growing number of minority students. We're seeing about 80 to 100 on average arrests by the police officers in the junior high at Northwest and Glendale over the last three, last, actually last five years if you look at it. You, don't, you see zero to one going on at Clayton. Salt Lake City School Board member Michael Clara says it's because full-time resource officers are stationed there. And he says it creates a direct school to prison pipeline. But we're introducing them into the criminal justice system at a much younger age. And then, and then we're conditioning them to expect that their behavior is going to be responded to in a law enforcement way. That's why Clara says he penned a 15 page letter to the U.S. Department of Education stating minority students are being targeted and unfairly and unproportionately disciplined compared to their white counterpart. Um, but I am and remain concerned that this creates a, a redundant level of bureaucracy, as others have said, that would affect even the most basic decisions at the micro local level. Community Council's decisions, which, and these are made up of the most local uh, decision makers there are, uh, to implement their school improvement plans, to make decisions based on the needs of their students at the individual schools, and um, and to make recommendations even to the, the local school board. The information you gave on why this was done, it, it, it was a lie. And so my concern is the board has already approved Michael, this. we're not. I, excuse me, I'm talking. I'm, Michael, I'm talking. But you haven't been recognized. I'm asking, the, this is a board meeting. I'm on the board and I am asking a question to, okay. to the superintendent. And when you, so, when you want to speak as a board member, you need to go through. I, I'm not a dog. I'm, I'm talking. So, so what I'm asking you, superintendent, on August 2nd, the board approved the $48,000 for that contract, and, and how do you, how are you able then to override an official act of the board is my question. Mr. Clark, now. The Utah legislature has been asked to audit the Salt Lake City School District after complaints that school leaders have been making decisions in secret and bypassing the school board members. Community members will ask the state auditor to do a second review to determine whether district leaders are in fact breaking the rules by making decisions in secret. So welcome um, to this meeting. The Salt Lake City School District is required by law to do its business in the public's view, but some complain that doesn't always happen. It's basically all like secret. Horizonte High School student Daniela Gasca says the school district let go of the single college advisor at her school without public discussion. Like they don't care about us. Like they see people, like you know, minorities as like, hey, they don't need a college advisor. They're not even gonna go to college. For the past two years, 
uh, we've been very vocal about what's going on with the school district. The NAACP and other members of the Utah community say they want an audit of the Salt Lake School District to know for sure if district leaders, including the board president, are making decisions in secret without letting the entire school board decide through a public vote. Some say there is a history of secret decisions about personnel and big purchases. I think you're going to find in this audit it's going to involve potentially millions of dollars of these sorts of appropriations that have not had the required vote of the board. State Senator Luz Escamilla says after getting phone calls from concerned parents, she's asked for a legislative audit. We're just trying to find answers, and I think the audit will give us an opportunity to find answers. Representative Angela Romero supports the audit. It's at the end of the day, it's children who suffer, and they're our future. And so I want to ensure that they're getting the quality education that they need. So I would just say that as school boards, local school boards, and as community council members, they are already highly regulated, checked, and balanced and by the state statute, by state board rules, by our local rules and regulations at the, at the school district level. And the process of government is already, governance is already challenging enough. So I would urge you to vote against this bill with all due respect to the representative. And then I only highlighted a couple things. I only, I think there was maybe two things that I, that, that were common, that, I, that were coming from my community about the majority of, I think, minority student bodies should be in there. And then, um, you know, site-based management. And so, so what, what concerns me though on a process issue is that this is on the agenda, it's a public agenda. We do it all the time where we discuss things and make decisions here. And, and I am opposed to being on email and deliberating on this with other board members about this prior to the meeting outside of the view of the public. And, and Michael, you, can I you finish, no, because I need to respond to that. Okay, then why that is in fact talking? not what I asked you to do. What I asked you to do was to okay, send me a separate mother. email. You're not my mother. I'm not, I don't have to do exactly how you want it done. I'm just telling you. You are criticizing me for setting up an illegal process, which I Well, it concerns me too. We have an in-house, we have in-house legal counsel that we've had to hire within the last few years. We have a compliance officer. And those people are already very busy. So if they were to, to need to respond at the local school level to issues raised by a legislative oversight committee, I think, um, you know, I just worry about that workload and having to hire additional people who are not in the classroom, not working directly for the benefit of students. Nope. Everything else I can wait to put in front Anyone else have something they need to say? Well, I don't need to say, but I'm going to say it. And this is not against you, Flo, but you know, when I came on this board a little over four years ago, we had no attorneys at the table. And now we have two attorneys every night, and I just would like to understand why we have attorneys at this table and why we're spending the money, number one, and also what's the need? Because I don't get it. I mean, I... This is, you know, this board has been going like this for years and years and years, and now in the last four years, we, um, you know, we exponentially increased this number of attorneys at the table. It seems to me that we have attorneys sitting at the table because the board has been sued at, the, at this, you know, and, and I wasn't on the board. So, I mean, I respect, I respect the fact that you are working, for, you believe that you respect, you're working for your constituents, and I respect your intentions. But I do believe that that's why we have attorneys sitting at this table now, is to make sure that we are not, for example, speaking out of order in closed sessions, that we are doing, you know, and I, and I, think, I think that's what, why we hired. And that's a closed no, session. But I, 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 yes, but I still believe that I because, and I, I think it may be a good thing to have extra checks to make sure. I mean, I think you, that you would be pleased about it because we have extra checks to make sure that we are behaving in the way that we but, are supposed but, but to that, But that's my issue. Not like your first meeting that you guys were here, I didn't, I, you know, I shook her hand and then she's telling me what I can say and can't say and then saying, and it's just made up stuff. And well, that's what I'm saying. That, that be, you know, we shouldn't have attorney dictating how we're going to talk and what we're going to say. Well, various agencies that we have to work with. All the special ed work, all the contract work, all of that we used to farm out. Now, Christina essentially does most of that. So, I think it's a good, a good question. 
grows. And I think that, Michael, you know why we have more attorneys present, and Catherine's absolutely right. It's in part because of the constant challenges to our actions as a board that you have brought to the board in the last two years. As a result of so in not order, getting my questions answered, okay? Well, but you I see, you wouldn't have to do that if, you, if, if questions were answered when I asked the administration, but when we, I think, Rosemary...